Well, thank you for your introduction. My name is Kohei Fujita. I'm from University of Tokyo. So I'll talk about fast and scalable low order unstructured implicit uh, finite element solver for earth cr crust deformation problem. So this work is with uh, our group members in University of Tokyo and Rike Nikes and also uh, engineers from uh, Fujitsu Limited. So uh, this is a brief introduction. Uh, so as uh, we have many earthquakes in Japan, uh, contribution of high performance computing to earthquake mitigation is highly anticipated from society. And thus we are developing a comprehensive earthquake simulation uh, that simulates all phases of earthquake disaster by using uh, the K computer system. So here uh, what we do is uh, simulate wave propagation from a uh, fault to uh, this uh, city and compute this uh, soft nonlinear uh, wave equation in the soft soils and then compute structure response and also social response. And, um, and so we simulate all of these phases by using the whole K computer system, uh, which is uh, 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 eighth and top 500 uh, at this moment. And uh, we have uh, made the, uh, doing this by speeding up Core Solver and this has been nominated for SC14, 15 Gordon Bell Prize finalists and awarded SC16 Best Pope Poster. So today's topic is enhancing this soft uh, solver for Earth's cross deformation problem. So before I move on to uh, uh, talking about the, uh, our development this, uh, in this uh, study, I will just give overview of what we can do with our earthquake simulation up to this point. Uh, so we compute the fall, uh, wave, elastic wave propagation from fall to city, and then we compute the city response of ground and structures, and then input into social simulation that is resident evacuation simulation uh, in, in Tokyo area. So this is what we can do. Okay. So we are targeting a district in Tokyo, central district in Tokyo. Um, if you have been to Tokyo, there is a big uh, circular line and uh, where the main stations are. And uh, we model this whole area of about 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers uh, using finite element simulation. So here, we, uh, the number of elements and is about 33 billion uh, elements and 133 billion degrees of freedom. We model this with a three-layered soil structure. There are many boring hole logs in Tokyo, so we can generate this kind of uh, uh, finite element model from such data. And as you can see, the uh, surface topography is also included into the model. And this is modeled with one meter sized on structure tetrahedral elements. And we compute this uh, using the whole K computer system. It consists of 80,000 nodes. And it's the, this is a part computed by one uh, node of K computer. We partition it with my Metis. And um, so this is the response of uh, the ground when we are seeing from above. So. There is a low land on the right-hand side, the eastern side of Tokyo, and this is the mount, not the hilly side of the Tokyo, and we can see a different response of the soil according to the uh, soil structure. And we can use this for a structure response simulation by, uh, in the next step. Okay, so we uh, have these geographic information data of these structures, and we can convert this into nonlinear these frame models, and we can convert this for 300,000 stru structures in this area, and we can com uh, compute the response of each building according to the uh, ground motion we have computed for each site in this domain. Okay. I can't quit this. Okay, sorry. So, um, 
This is the out outline of my presentation. I will first describe our solver we have developed for the simulation I have just shown. And based on this solver, we developed the precondition for this earth crust deformation problem in this study. And I will show about that part and then um, performance measurements on K-computer and application example in summary. So our target problem is to solve large matrix equation many times. And this arises from unstructured low-order finite element analysis used in many components of our comprehensive earthquake simulation. Uh, so to be more specific, we are solving many uh, times of these sparse symmetric positive definite matrix equations with unknown vectors with up to one trillion degrees of freedom. And this includes many random access and uh, communication. And so the difficulty of this problem is attaining load balance among millions of cores we want to use, attaining peak performance, and also attaining a uh, low, uh, a high convergency of iterative solver. And, this, uh, and all of this is needed for give it, getting a short time to solution. And uh, what we think of first is designing a scalable and fast finite element solver. And we are targeting uh, uh, machines with order of million cores. So we want, first want to design an algorithm that can obtain equal granularity at this number of cores. And uh, what we think of is using the matrix-free matrix vector product, or which we call the element by element method. And this uh, method is, uh, instead of storing the global uh, matrix, sparse matrix on memory, we compute this a local element matrix on the fly, and this add it up into the left-hand side vector when we are computing matrix vector products. And this method is good uh, when we think of uh, load balance, because we can get equal load balance when we distribute the elements uh, to, the no uh, to nodes with uh, for equal number of elements to the nodes. And also, this is good if, in terms of peak performance, because all this computation is on cache computation. And the standard way of using these element-by-element -element method is combining with a simple preconditioner into an iterative solver. Uh, simple preconditioners, for example, is like a di diagonal preconditioner or such. And this, this method is uh, good in scalability and peak performance because the ma major kernel is the element-by-element -element method. However, the uh, simple pre preconditioner requires many iterations, and thus the time to solution is not so good. And an alternative is to use a sophisticated preconditioner, such as ILU or more, uh, more sophisticated preconditioners, that enables to reduce the number of iterations. However, the scalability of peak performance uh, degrades uh, because we cannot use the element-by-element -element method. And thus the time to solution is also uh, not as good for some problems. So uh, what we developed is a solver that uses the element-by-element -element method. And here, what we use is a multi-grade uh, mixed precision and adaptive preconditioner for uh, using element-by-element -element method. And since all of the computation is based on element-by-element -element method, the scalability and peak performance is good, and also the convergency is improved. So this time to solutions is improved. And the key to make this solver even faster is to make an element by element kernel, which is very fast. OK, so uh, what we did is to uh, use a hybrid mesh of structured and unstructured mesh. So in a normal uh, solver, uh, we use a pure unstructured mesh to uh, model the whole domain, including the homogeneous parts and unhomogeneous parts. So what we did is to model the homogeneous parts of the problem with structured mesh and uh, model the uh, complex part of the problem with unstructured mesh. And by using structured mesh, uh, we can reduce the number of data access. This is registered L1 cache access and also the uh, floating point operation counts. And uh, so by using a structured and structured mesh, we can get the same results, but with less number of cost, uh, less cost. So by using this fast and scalar solver algorithm and fast element by element method, we could get good scalability, peak performance, and convergency, and thus get time to good time to solution on the K computer. And this was nominated for uh, Golden Bell Prize finalists in 2014 and 15, and also uh, best poster in 2016. So based on this solver, we think of uh, developing a, a solver for earth crust deformation problem. 
the earth cross deformation problem is computing static elastic response under faulting. So the input is fault distribution on the ground at plate, uh, plate interface, and output is deformation at surface. So what, uh, use, we use this to uh, uh, guess the internal uh, plow, plate boundary uh, conditions when we are thinking of using it for uh, earthquake uh, forecasting simulations. And what we need here is uh, converged solutions of stress and strain at the plate boundary because we want to evaluate constitutive relations of the plate boundary. And so this leads to resolution of order 10 meters at plate boundaries and also this leads to a uh, problem size of trillion degrees of freedom. And thus we need a fast solver, a fast and scalable solver together with small memory footprint. And as I have said, our previous solvers were designed for dynamic problems. And so we need uh, to, by changing the preconditioner, uh, we can get, uh, expect improvement in performance. Uh, so to be more specific, the range of Green's functions are longer for a static problem. And so efficient reduction of long range error is expected to improve convergence of the solver. So the standard way of doing this is using a multigrid preconditioner. And um, what this is doing is uh, we come coarsen the problems uh, instead of solving the whole, whole uh, uh, high resolution problems and use the solution of the coarsen problem as approximate to the, uh, the original problem. And this reduces number of total iterations and cost per iteration. And geometric and algebraic multigrids are the standard way uh, options we can use in multigrids, and both methods have pros and cons. For example, the geometric multigrid, uh, we can use element-by-element -element kernels for a geometric multigrid. However, uh, we cannot apply it to unstructured mesh. And for algebraic multigrids, uh, since we, are, we need to explicitly store the uh, matrix on memory, we cannot use element-by-element -element method. However, we can apply it to unstructured mesh. So what we think of is uh, int uh, using a hybrid geometric algebraic multigrade method to our unstructured solver and integrate it into our uh, high performance element by element method based solver. So this is the solver algorithm. So the left hand side, this is the target problem we want to solve. We want to solve a tetrahedral mesh uh, in second order and uh, in double precision. So in a conjugate gradient solver, uh, we solve the preconditioning equation using a preconditioning matrix solver. So here, what we use is a three-step multigrid. And um, in the courses multigrid, we use the algebraic coarsen multigrid. Second step is a linear tetrahedron, which is generated by geometric coarsening of the second order tetrahedron mesh. And in each step, we use a conjugate gradient solver with diagonal preconditioning and to solve the equations roughly and use it as an initial solution to the next step. So uh, since uh, either, even if we are, uh, target problem is in double precision, we can compute all of this in single precision. So we can shift most of, most of the computation onto the single precision. And this leads to less memory footprint and also a high performance on supercomputers at this time. Okay, so uh, this is the expected effects. Uh, by using this hybrid geometric algebraic multigrid, we can use the fast element by element kernel, which, have, which, have, which we have developed, and also high improvement in convergency with low memory footprint, as we can only use we as we only use algebraic multigrid on the very coarse part of the problem. And also, we use a single uh, single precision in preconditioner. Uh, also, we think of uh, getting further speed up on element by element kernel. So this is the uh, overview of the element by element kernel. So uh, here we distribute the elements to uh, different uh, nodes or cores or SIMD lanes. And uh, if each of these write in uh, has the same uh, node, that means it will add into the same address and we can uh, not, uh, there occurs the data recurrence. So use of SIMD units and multi-cores requires care. And so we develop SIMD buffering and multi-core uh, coloring methods for efficient computation of uh, element by element kernel. Okay, so uh, this is uh, what we did for SIMD computation. So 
instead of uh, uh, we first we allocate the uh, SIMD lanes for one element per SIMD lane, and uh, normally uh, we cannot SIMD SIMDize this uh, computation because of the data recurrence. Uh, but if we split the computation into two and um, do the computation part, that is the uh, computation of the right-hand side vector times the local matrix, and put it into a, a right buffer, and then uh, read it again and add it into the left-hand side with non-SIMD computation, we can uh, compute most of the uh, computationally expensive parts with SIMD. And we also block this into uh, a loop, a uh, block loop, so that uh, we, have, we can reduce the size of the sequential write buffer and read buffer uh, such that it fits into, into the L1 cache. Okay, so uh, we also uh, did similar things for getting efficient multi-core performance and by uh, get, developing a multi-core uh, coloring method. So in a normal coloring method, uh, we decompose the overall my, old mesh so that uh, each color has, doesn't overlap uh, of the nodes. But that leads to a bad cache and reuse efficiency. So what we did is to ex explicitly uh, partition the problems according to the number of threads we are using. Uh, for example, here we uh, use three threads to uh, update this overall mesh, and uh, each of these colors correspond to which part of uh, which thread is computing. So what thread one computes this part, while comp thread two computes this part, and thread three computes this part. And then we um, have a barrier here, and then we do it the second step. We comp thread one computes here two three, and then color three computes this one. So by using this, uh, each thread can reuse the uh, nodal values on the cache, and this leads to a better um, performance on. Uh, multi-core CPUs. Okay, so I will show performance measurements in the publication for example. So here we um, compare performance with PCGE. This is a standard uh, algorithm solver with a three by three block diagonal preconditioning. And Gamera, this is uh, what we developed in 2014 and uses a geometric multigrade. And both of these algorithms are implemented using the high-performance element-by-element kernel, that is the high-efficient SIMD and multi-core implementation. And we solve this for a weak scaling problem. So this is the develop one and Gamera and PCG. So we can see that about 10 times faster than the PCG and about two times faster than the 2014 algorithm. And uh, these numbers in brackets uh, shows the uh, floating point performance to the peak. So we can see we can get about roughly 20% of the uh, high hardware peak on the K computer. And this is uh, quite good compared to the HPCG benchmark. A K computer, you can get about 5% in double precision in HPCG. However, we can get more, uh, although we are using uh, mixed precision, so we can't compare directly, but still we can get high performance. And also the scaling is uh, good, and uh, from this is 9,000 cores to 290,000 cores, uh, we can get up to 95% scalability. And this is the speed up efficiency on the K computer. Um, we can get similar uh, speed up as the other algorithms uh, since we are using the same kernel. And um, so we can get good speed up up to 150,000 compute cores. And this is the performance portability. So here we compare a 16 nodes of K computer and four nodes of Intel Xeon cluster. So the main difference is the, uh, um, the B by F or the floating performance to the memory bandwidth. So the K computer has a larger, relatively larger memory bandwidth uh, than the Intel cluster, uh, but the Intel cluster has more flops. So normally for this kind of unstructured lower order finite element simulations, the performance is um, more or less um, uh, correlated to the memory bandwidth. Uh, but since we use a method with you, uh, using the element by element method, we can uh, use the high compute performance 
uh, of the hardware. And thus, uh, even if the uh, memory bandwidth is lower on the Intel Xeon cluster, we can get accelerated performance. So this is good for uh, not just only for K computer, for other types of CPU-based architecture. And we are also uh, now porting this to KNL Intel uh, Xeon Phi clus uh, clusters. Okay, so this is a performance on practical problem. And we apply this to East Japan model uh, with eight crust layers uh, with full uh, topography and plate boundary and, and material properties. And this is the generated model. So this is about 500 kilometers, 800 kilometers. And this is a meshed with a mesh size with 125 meters with second order tetrahedral mesh. And this leads to about 400 uh, billion degrees of freedom problem. And this is the performance. So the, compared to PCG, this is about 20 times faster. For Gamera, this is about 2.2 times faster. OK, and um, these numbers indicate the floating point efficiency. So compared to the 20% we uh, had on the weak scaling problem, uh, we couldn't get as much performance. This is because the time used for the algebraic multigrid, this purple part is the algebraic multigrid part, uh, is, uh, more time is used there. Uh, however, this means that uh, the gain from the older uh, other uh, algorithms is larger, and thus we get higher relative time to solution. Okay, so this is a comparison of stress response. This is important when we are thinking of applying this to uh, earth, uh, real earth science problems. And so this, uh, so normally when uh, uh, many uh, type of these kind of uh, simulations use structured mesh, and if we use structured mesh, we get, we get this kind of rigid uh, sum response, but if we use our method, we can get a smooth response, and we can also um, get convergence, we can explicitly check the convergence of the solution by comparing with the coarser resolution mesh. Okay, so in summary, we developed a solver for static elastic cross deformation problem, and we used hybrid geometric algebraic multigrip combined with mixed precision arithmetic and fast element by element kernel. And this led to 95% size of efficiency, and that is 20% 20, 20 of peak on the K-computer. And this is, uh, was 19 times faster than preconditioned CG solver, and two, two times faster than SC14 problem. And so this is the perspective for future research. And um, so we developed a solver that can enable order of 10 meter resolution analysis using five minutes on K-computer, half of K-computer. And um, so our target is to use this for uh, plate boundary state inversion analysis and earthquake cycle simulation based on 10 to for power of four to five times of these cross deformation simulation. And this is expected to be, become possible by operation of post-K computer. The post-K computer is now under development in Japan, and it is uh, supposed to have about 100 times application performance compared to the K computer. So when we get this supercomputer, we may be able to use our method to do such kind of uh, simulations. And also, as we have shown, um, the performance is also portable to other CPU-based systems, uh, such as Intel Haswell, that was the Haswell cluster, and we are now doing it for Intel Xeon Phi KNL clusters. And also, uh, this method is uh, standard uh, finite element implementation, so we can extend this to other types of problems according to the governing equation, such as viscoelastic simulation. And thus, we, have, we think we have potential to support observation and experiment for obtaining knowledge of plate boundary state in the future. Okay. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. It was a very nice and interesting talk. Uh, I guess there are questions. Yes, there's one. <coughs> What um, frequency content is implied um, by your grid uh, for the seismic waves? H how high a frequency, uh, uh, how high frequencies are included in your simulation? Okay, uh, so you are talking about the first part of my talk, the dynamic simulation part. 
so this, for this video part, uh, we are targeting up to 10 hertz simulation. Of course, we don't have such ground structure at this moment, uh, but this is kind of a demonstration such that we can do such big problems. So I understand that comment to mean that you don't have an um, accurate model for the subsurface? That, that's your point? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. not up to 10 hertz. Yeah. However, uh, we can use many of these types of simulations to guess the underground structure by using observations which are now densely measured in Japan. Okay, so yes, there's one more question. Thank you. So the, the multi-level um, uh, preconditioner you used is very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, people would choose a um, linear smoother, but you've chosen a nonlinear smoother in a conjugate gradient method. Um, did this actually perform better? Like, what, what motivated this choice to uh, to use CG as a as a, a, a smoother in this? Oh, uh, so uh, our basic uh, kind of idea is to make it as robust as possible. So for if we use other types, I mean, from our understanding, we used many types. We tried many types, and we uh, got this one, and which is the most robust for many types of problems. For some problems with very regular mesh, some types of solver didn't converge. For this one, and most of uh, the ones that we tried converged. So this is what we used. So you actually, you actually managed to realize some sort of ad adaptivity from this, uh, from this smoother? Uh, so we use the most ro robust type. Okay. Mm. So, so one more. Um, maybe I've, I have one for you, or maybe more. But um, Normally, you, uh, if you're solving the, the, this seismic wave propagation problem, the frequency domain, the, the, uh, the equation that you have to solve is the Helmholtz equation. And depending on the frequency, it becomes indefinite. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just wondering what kind of exact equation you are solving in your, in your model. Oh, so what we're solving is a wave equation, uh, just like a, bass, a mass spring in 3D. Uh, uh, but we have a nonlinear, uh, that means it softens depending on the strain. Uh, the soil softens between, with the strain for these very soft soil layers. So uh, we are solving such kind of simulation. So that means we can't do it in the frequency domain. We have to okay. do it in the time domain. OK, yes. And another question was related to the mesh partitioning that mm. you are using. You mentioned METIS yes. in some part of your, yes. your talk. Yes. Eh? But the mesh that you're using is again extremely large. I'm yes. just wondering how this fits together using METIS oh. and oh. This, uh, such a large uh, so. mesh for this. So what uh, METIS is used for partitioning the mesh. Yes. The mesh itself uh, is uh, generated. We, are gen we have also developed an automated mesh generator for these large problems. And yes, so, so we have a specialized mesher for this type of problem. OK. So in this case, uh, I thank you very much for the interesting talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>